reading from the book of the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing, offerings and libations for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, proclaim a fast, call an assembly, gather the people, notify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, and the infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom quit his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among the people, Where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, merciful, O Lord, Lord, for for we we have have sinned. sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin cleanse me. Be Be merciful, merciful, O Lord, Lord, for for we we have have sinned. sinned. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, merciful, O Lord, Lord, for we have sinned. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Be merciful, merciful, O Lord, Lord, for we have sinned. Give me back the joy of your salvation and a willing spirit sustain in me. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Be Be merciful, merciful, O Lord, Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ. As if God were appealing through us, we implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. Working together then, we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, in an acceptable time, I heard you. And on the day of salvation, I helped you. Behold, now is a very acceptable time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Open our hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. Glory and praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory be to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people might see them. Otherwise you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, 
so that your almsgiving may be secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret. And your Father, who sees in secret, will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you may not appear to be fasting, except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father, who sees what is hidden, will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Lord Jesus Christ. The prophet Joel beautifully sets for us the tone of this day and of this season of repentance. Proclaim a fast, sound the trumpet, notify the congregation. We have to build a firewall against sin, which destroys not only the individual, but the whole community. And therefore, the individual needs to repent, and the whole community needs to repent, because God has created for Himself a people of His own. We are the people of the covenant, the new and everlasting covenant in the blood of Christ. And today we begin a season where we deepen our repentance from sin, turning away from it altogether, in all its forms, more deeply, renewing the repentance we have already made from sin, embracing this transfer that Christ has accomplished for us from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. In fact, Paul says to the Ephesians, you once were darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Lent calls us to do this, to focus on repentance as we do in this first section of Lent. And then later on, as the season progresses toward Easter, the readings and prayers of the liturgy focus us more on the mystery of Christ Himself, because we're going to be preparing to celebrate the culmination of the liturgical year, which is the Easter Triduum from Holy Thursday night to Easter Sunday night, the three days that Jesus referred to when He said, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. And He was speaking of the temple of His body. This magnificent paschal mystery of the suffering, death, and resurrection of Christ, which does what? It creates a new humanity, a new community of people reconciled to God. And so we reflect on the Christ in whom we are inserted, with whom we are united, who is the head of the body of which we are members. This is Lent, leading us to the celebration of that central event of all human history, a celebration for which we have to have our minds and hearts purified so that we can see and understand it more deeply, cling to it more readily, and know Christ more intimately. Brothers and sisters, we will on Easter renew the vows of our baptism. Lent is meant to prepare us to do that because we will be asked, do you reject Satan and all his works and all his empty promises? To reject Satan, to reject temptation, to reject sin. We've got to strengthen ourselves. We've got to practice that's why during Lent we do extra prayer, extra penance. We sacrifice even things that are good. We don't sacrifice things like chocolate or meat or other things we might enjoy during other times of the year. We don't sacrifice those things because there's anything wrong with them. We sacrifice them because we want to build up our spiritual strength. Because if we can say no to something that is pleasurable to us, even when that pleasurable thing is okay, we'll be stronger to say no to something pleasurable which is actually evil and harmful to us. We exercise our spiritual muscles in Lent. 
We prepare to celebrate our baptism and we will pray today and every day of Lent for the catechumens of the church who are preparing to be baptized. And it reminds us, doesn't it, that baptism is a sacrament of welcome, bringing new people into the grace of Christ, joining them to the community, not because we have chosen them, but because God has chosen them. Brothers and sisters, Lent has very strong pro-life implications for us. If we are to reject sin, it means we are to reject abortion. If we are to reject sin, it means we are to reject the culture of death. Personally and communally, it means we are to reject the empty promises of the devil. And one of those empty promises is that somehow abortion is a solution, somehow it's a good. It isn't. It is unadulterated evil that solves no problems, but only creates new ones. And today, I have issued a special call. As a Lenten practice, but not just during the period of Lent, but permanently, I have sent out this morning a statement saying that believers are called to give witness to the truth and witness to the purity that the body of Christ is meant to have. We are called to give witness to the fact that we're separating ourselves from sin and from what can lead us to sin, and that therefore... Because of the evils that we see in our society, fostered by the Democrat Party, evils of unfettered abortion, we just saw them vote, and fortunately it did not pass, but we saw them try to pass a bill which would embed unrestricted abortion into our law. The Democrat Party on that and on matters of religious freedom, and on matters of the meaning of marriage and family, and human sexuality, and the rights of parents to educate their children, and on and on we could go until the sun sets tonight. Without stopping and without even pausing for a breath, we would not finish the litany of evils that this particular party is now not only pushing on us, but celebrating. Brothers and sisters, it's got to stop. And therefore, I sent out a statement that as a witness to Lenten penance, believers who still identify with the Democrat Party should leave that party, terminate their membership and identification and support of it in any way, shape, or form. This is one of many ways in which we as the people of God are called today and throughout this season to do what Joel said. Blow the trumpet, proclaim a fast, call an assembly, notify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, let the priests and the ministers of the Lord weep and say, Spare, O Lord, your people. Forgive us for associating with evil, for doing evil. Give us a new chapter of holiness. Give us a new determination to be saints. Now is the day of salvation. Let us not put off our conversion for one more day. Lord, give us Lenten repentance. Give us the joy of salvation. Amen.